Hey everybody, Steve here. We're talking about Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 30, where Jesus is, starts out in verses 13 to 15 as the little children are being brought to Jesus. And the disciples are kind of like, whoa, whoa, you know, you can't go to the master, you know, you're just a little kid. Uh, wow, wrong attitude to have, wrong motivation in their heart. Because Jesus, he says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to, to such as these. Uh, Jesus talked about children before, and we see that a child is open. They're not, they're not hard-hearted. They don't have lots of pride. They haven't spent a lot of time being corrupted by the world. So they're easier to teach, and it, there's honesty there, or more honesty than, than what we see in adults. Uh, but just keep that in mind where Jesus talks about little children. Then he goes on, the rich young ruler comes up and he says, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus says, Whoa, whoa, stop there. Why do you call me good? There's only one who's good, and that's God. And he says, Well, what must I do to, to get eternal life? Well, if we backtrack, it's interesting how he, how he calls Jesus teacher, but he doesn't call him like other people have been revealed uh, to them by God or the Holy Spirit, that he's the Messiah, he's the Son of God, that he's uh, a, a son of David. Uh, you know, all those things that pointed to Jesus being the Messiah, the Savior. But this person who claimed to be, let's say, a Christian for a modern day term, he saw what Jesus was doing. He saw the, the displays of miraculous powers over the demonics, the, the infirm, the sick, uh, you know, even the stories of... Uh, uh, the wind and the waves and nature and things of that nature, and he taught as one having authority. But this person, I don't know, there's something in the way. And it's interesting because Jesus sees right to the heart of the matter. And the guy says, well, what must I do to, to get this eternal life? And Jesus says, uh, well, you've got to obey the commandments. He says, which ones? Now, keep in mind that Jesus went over, I think it was Matthew 5, went over and he, he kind of had a new version of, of the law. Jesus was our king and he's, our, he's the king of kings and lord of lords and he's our high priest. Well, that position, according to the Bible, has never been held by anybody except for Melchizedek, which he was a priest and he was a king. Jesus is the king of kings and he's the lord of lords and he's our high priest. And so whenever, and there's other scriptures that talk about when there's a change in the priesthood, which there is because now he's got all power and all authority, there is a change in the law as well. And Jesus changed, talked about the law. You know, if, if you commit the, the act of murder, uh, you've sinned. But Jesus said that if you hate somebody, if you hate your brother in your heart, you've committed murder as well. Well, Jesus runs through and he says, uh, well, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, no false testimony, honor your father and mother and love your neighbors yourself. And the man says, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? Here's where Jesus separates it, and he already knows what's in the young man's heart, the rich young ruler, who obviously has great position within the synagogue, within the church. Uh, he's young, he probably has lots of money, in a, in a position of power and authority himself to some degree. And he says, well, what else must I do? He says, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions, give it all to the poor, then come and follow me. And of course, the guy is... It's heartbroken because uh, he, that was the stumbling block. He put money, mammon, uh, in front of him and God, and so money was his idol. Uh, you know, the man went away sad because he had great wealth. And that's what Jesus does, is that he goes to the heart of the matter. He doesn't go to the things that say, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't convict us for the good things that we do. Uh, because if we're doing God's will and we're doing his good works, boom, great. You know, we're going to get blessed for that. But rather, when we stand before a judge, we're there because of the law that we broke, not for the good things that we've done. And Jesus pointed this out with this young man. Uh, now, it's also interesting that people who have this, this little sidebar here. Yeah, I got some time. But people who talk about, well, you have to, this is going to make a lot of you mad if you say mandatory tithe or you go to hell type person. Notice Jesus didn't talk about tithing. He didn't say, go sell everything you have, give your tithe, give the rest of the poor, and then come follow me. Because Jesus isn't about percentages. When Jesus laid himself on that cross, he gave himself for the sins of the world 100%. He, he didn't reserve back, oh, I'm only going to give 
or 20 or 50 or 75. And when we look at other scriptures in the Bible for New Testament believers and the new and everlasting covenant of Jesus Christ, uh, I've already done other videos on this, but we are to give as we see need. Because if we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then he can put on our heart what we're supposed to give. And if you're the person that says, well, if you don't tithe, uh, you're going to hell because you're a lawbreaker, yeah, you might get mad at this because Jesus doesn't agree with you. Uh, nowhere is the tithe even mentioned here. And here's a prime, a great place for Jesus to, to settle it once and for all, that you're supposed to tithe. Everlasting, boom, done with it. But we don't see that anywhere in the New Testament. What we do see in place of the tithe is to give as we see need. And that if we have a relationship, it's like if you're with your, your, your spouse and you're going and it's like you see somebody that needs help, well, what should we give them? I don't know. Wow, Mark. man, I just feel like I should give this. Because we, we, we give as we see need. We see the appropriate to fix that problem within our, our power out of the, the compassion that God has put in our hearts. If we say, it's only, I'm only going to give 10%, boom, what have we done? We've actually, we, we could be considered as being disobedient to God because if he wanted us to fulfill that need 100% or 50%, then what do we just do? We've relinquished our obedience and it's not a relationship, but we put it back as a list of things to do like the Old Testament, like this rich young ruler. What things do I have to do so I can make it? Don't touch the sin in my heart, but just give me a list, a formula, a percentage of what I have to do. Now, I'm not saying for those of you that tithe that you're wrong. If God lays on your heart to give 10%, then as a personal conviction, that's fine. But don't get to the point of when you get so legalistic and you say, well, if you don't tithe, uh, you're robbing God, and hence lawbreakers, uh, they all end up in hell. Okay? Okay. Uh, and if you look at how tithing was in the Old Testament, it wasn't the 10% off the top. It was the last. So in other words, if you had 10 sheep, guess what? It wasn't the first one that went to God. It was the number 10th one. So if you had sheep one through nine sheep and that's all you had, guess what? You didn't tithe. Ooh, yeah, get a lot of people on the tithing. They don't, they'll get mad at this. But what we're talking about here is that our priorities have to be right. And that's what God goes for. He pushes to the point of where it's like our lives are under the fiery trials and the Holy Spirit and his truth who guides us in all truth combined with God's word and Jesus just lays it on the line and bang, there it is. And the truth will convict us of the things that we do wrong and we have the opportunity to go to God and ask for forgiveness. And when he does that, it gives us peace and he gives us blessing. And then the things of the world, if we're not attached to them, then it's so much easier. We become like little children. It's easier to grasp on uh, to the Father's hand and to follow Him. Remember how when you were real little and you didn't even know what money was, it was some of the best times that probably some of us have ever had. All we wanted was our Father to come take us by the hand and take us to the park and, and go for walks. That's why God wanted us to be like little children. Cast off the things of the world. The money... Uh, the idolatry, the things, the stuff, the junk, the crap. And just take the Father's hand and walk with Him. And have Him show you <coughs> what you need to do in your walk. i got about a minute left. But, uh, and the disciples asked, Peter asked, well, how can you do this? This is impossible. And Jesus says, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. In other words, God, only God, and through his word and through him, Jesus Christ, can we remove that flesh, that old self, that old nature that offends God and gets in the way of us worshiping God with all our heart and all our mind and all our soul and all our strength. So anyway, Jesus says uh, that at the renewal, uh, the disciples ask, well, what, what's in it for us? Well, they're going to be the 12, they're going to be on 12 thrones and they're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. But then he talks about those who have given much away, in other words, in priorities, that many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. And uh, they'll receive 100 times as much and will inherit eternal life. So anyway, that's something to think about. Be a little child and wait till the Father uh, to grab your hand, not wait for him, but to go with him and go down that narrow road to salvation so we can get there. Take care and God bless. Peace.